Next, we'll talk about the continuum of actions. So before this uh, subchapters, so we have learned that the person A can have two strategies, maybe S1 and SN, okay? So what the penalty shoot out either left or to the right. And the uh, prisoner time are either faint or silent, okay? But in reality, the choice does not con confine it into two actions. Say, even in the penalty shootout, you can shoot to the center or upper, upper right or bottom right, okay? So in most of the game, in the real world, we have loss of strategy. So maybe S2, S3, up to Sn, okay? So actually our decision is continuous, not only confined in a discrete number. So one very famous application is the tragedy of the commons. So okay, in the most of the continuum of actions, so we usually we will use the case in the production functions. So say the firms can produce one to infinity amount of output, and they should choose the optimal output that based on the other peop other competitors' actions. Okay, so one very famous example is the tragedy of the commons. So the story is that two herders decide how many sheep to graze on the village commons. Okay, so if they graze too much sheep, the grass will be consumed completely and the <coughs> regeneration process will be slower and everybody will be, will be hurt. So they should choose the best number, optimal number of sheep to graze such that they can maximize their own utilities. So assume the value of the grassland is some constant, say 1, 2, oh, just for, just for simple, okay, minus the number of sheep Q1 of the first herder and Q2 the second herder. So this is a decreasing function because the more the sheep, the less the grassland will be exist in the village. So this is the value of the grassland. Then the utility to the herder 1 will be equal to Q1 times the value. So similar to the utility to hurdle 2. Okay. So if they are acting at their own interest, they will maximize the utility by selecting the number of their shape. And then equal to 0. And you will get 1, 2, 0, minus 2, Q1, minus Q2, equal to 0. And for hurdle 2, this is 1, 2, 0, minus 2, Q2, minus Q1, equal to 0. Okay. Then Q1 is equal to 60 minus 1 half times Q2. So this is the best response of Herda 1 given the other party's action. And the best response for Herda 2 is again 60 minus 1 half of Q1. Next, we will substitute the best response of the second Herda into the first Herda we will get Q1 equal to 60 minus 1 half times 60 minus 1 half times Q1. Okay, so by solving this, you just have one variable. You will find the optimal Q is 40. And you substitute back the Q1 here. Again, you will get, you will get the Q2 star is equal to 40. So each herders payoff would be 40 times 1 to 0 minus 40 minus 40 okay so this is 16,000 so this is exactly equal to the payoff of the herder 2 but why do we call this tragedy okay we call this tragedy because actually this is this payoff is not the best one okay so if if the two herders consider each other, okay, so what is the optimal amount of sheep they keep? So let's go back to the value function. So assume this only my <coughs> they group the Q1 and Q2, okay, then the utility is Q times 1 to O minus Q. Then you do the first order condition. You will get 1, 2, 0, minus 2, Q is 0. So the optimal number of Q is 
60. Then the utility would be equal to 3060 because you substitute 60 here, substitute 60 here. Okay, so in this case, you can see if they can find the optimal amount of ship and eventually divide it by two, they can generate a higher payoff. So if they cooperate, their payoff is higher than they act on their own interests. Okay, so this is called tragedy of karma because you can see that the socially optimal is 60 number of ship, rather they keep 80 of that. So this will lead to some negative externalities to the environment. Okay, so the tragedy of, gum, of the commons is the famous topic study in game theory and in the externality topics. So we will cover it in the later part. Okay, so we have finished the uh, uh, simultaneous game theory. Next we go to the sequential game. So sequential game means that the player's action are not made simultaneously. So one player will make the decision first, while the other player will make the decision later. Okay, so let's introduce the how how can we solve the game in a simultaneous game. Okay, so let's go back to our example, the battle of the sex. So assume that the wife makes the decision first and the husband will make the decision later. Okay. So here, we can write down the strategy of the husband. So for the husband, so he can choose ballet, then a vertical stroke. Vertical stroke means given the wife's action, given the other party's action. So here, given the wife choose ballet, he choose ballet. And given the wife choose boxing, he still choose ballet. So this action means that the husband always choose ballet. So the second strategy is ballet, given ballet, boxing, given boxing. So this means he always follow the wife. For the third one is boxing, a given ballet, and ballet given boxing so he always do the opposite well you know this will not be selected but for the strategy it means all the strategies you need to write down all the scenario that can happen okay so the last one is boxing given ballet and boxing given boxing so he always choose boxing so these four are the strategy set of the husband Okay, so after you write down the strategy set, you can analyze by a normal form. So wife can choose ballet and boxing. Now the husband can have four combinations. Okay, so this is first, second, third and fourth okay and their payoff first if the wife choose ballet and if the husband choose one the one means that he always choose ballet okay then they will get payoff two and one two for the wives and one for the husband then here this will be zero and zero because this is strategy one. Strategy one means that given the wife choose boxing, he choose ballet. Then they don't go to each other. They don't go with each other. So they get zero payoff. Then go to strategy two. So if the wife choose ballet, he will choose ballet. Okay, so two and one. If the wife choose boxing, he choose boxing. So they get one and two. And three here. Since the husband is always choosing the opposite, so definitely zero, zero, and zero, zero. Finally, for the fourth, if the wife chooses ballet, 
the husband will choose boxing. So zero zero. And if the wife choose boxing, the husband choose boxing. So one and two. Okay, so let's use our ways to find out the Nash equilibrium. So given the husband choose the action one, the wife should choose ballet. If the husband choose action two, the wife should choose ballet. And if the husband chooses three, the wife can choose ballet or boxing. They are equal. Is they are equal. Finally, the uh, if the husband chooses four, the wife should should choose boxing. So next, if the wife chooses ballet, the husband should choose one or two. If the wife chooses boxing, husband should choose two or four. Okay, so the Nash equilibrium. We have we have three. So they are first wife choose ballet. Then husband choose ballet ballet. And ballet boxing. So second is here. So here means that wife chooses ballet, and husband choose ballet, ballet, and boxing. Given boxing. Finally, is the last last box. So this is the wife chooses boxing, and husband chooses boxing given ballet and boxing given boxing. So these three are the Nash equilibrium. Okay. Well, but the drawback is that so which one should be selected eventually? So next we will try to solve this game. Okay. So you can actually express the game into the game tree. So we call this the extensive form. Okay. So player one is the wife. She can choose ballet or boxing. So after the player one chose, the player two will chooses the action. So the husband can choose ballet and boxing. So if they choose, if the wife chooses ballet and the box and the husband chooses ballet, they get two and one. So this is the payoff. And if they choose the opposite, zero and zero. Finally, in this point, wife choose boxing and the husband choose ballet, they get zero zero. And the wife choose boxing, the husband choose boxing. This is one and two. Okay. So how to solve this game? How to how to see which Nash equi Nash Nash equilibrium should be selected? Okay. So we need to use a skills called backward induction. So backward induction means start from the player two. Okay. Start at the action of the last player. Okay. So for backward induction. We need to see that okay. We first ignore the player one. Try to investigate what will be, what will be selected for player two. Okay, so here we have two sub game. Sub game means the game inside the large game. Okay, so here, husband will choose ballet and boxing, and he knows that he will get utility one, if ballet and zero if boxing. So definitely. He will not choose boxing. So at the bottom, so he will get zero or two. So again, he will not choose ballet if this happened. Okay, then we can see that husband will choose ballet at the up and boxing at the down. So now let's move back to the first players. The player, the first player, know that okay, if she choose ballet, she will get two. Because the zero will not be selected, 
and if she choose boxing, she will get one because again, she, she know that Butler will not be selected. So as a result, the wife will choose Butler because she will get two rather than one. So finally, this will be selected eventually. So this is one of the Nash equilibria in the in the normal form. Okay, so by backward induction, we know that this will be selected eventually, and the other two Nash equilibria will be ruled out.